Welcome. This is the last part of the intro to VBA series. The next few minutes will be focused on three different types of loops. A loop allows you to repeat the same instructions over any amount of time specified, although note the larger the amount, the longer it takes. And it could potentially lead to more issues down the line, like um, your Excel might break depending on how many total iterations, like if we're talking in the millions, then there might be a problem. The different loops will allow you to go until a specific number or until a certain criteria has met. Loops are essential to building functions. It gives a lot more power to VBA functionality since you can now effectively go through entire workbooks of data. The three, the three loops we are going over are for next, do while or until, and for each loops. Starting off with for next loops, the syntax looks like this, although we do have to denote a variable first. So let's say dim i as integer. So first we've made a variable i. But then for i equals 1 to 5, next. So this is the basic syntax. What's going to happen is i is an integer, and then the for loop makes it count. So to demonstrate what this does, let's say cells i, so row i, 1, so we want column 1, is equivalent to i. So what it's going to do is because i is going to count up, so cells is going to start at 1. 1, 1, or a1 is equivalent to i, which is 1. And then it's going to grow to 2. So 2, 1 is equal to 2, 3, 1 is equal to 3, so on and so forth. If I run this, you'll see that a is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and it goes exactly up till 5. It's going to go 1, pass through the next 2, all the way till 5, go through 5, and it's going to end. Now, the next loop we're going to go through is a do while or do until. So using the same i, we're going to use that as a counter. So we're going to make it equivalent to 1 first, i equals 1, and then do. And the way you end it is loop until i equals 5. So first of all, we're going to make a counter. So i equals i plus 1. What this does is once it hits this part, because it can reference itself, i is going to be, this i is going to be equivalent to 1 plus 1, which makes it 2. And then it will actually keep growing as we go. And then what we're going to do is the same thing. So cells i1 is equivalent to i. So it's going to go up until 5, I believe. Let's put 2 just so we can put it in the second column and see. See, this time it's going up to 4. So what's happening is, because this equals 5, to get to 5, i equals i plus 1 is starting off here. So if we wanted to change that, we could put i equals i plus 1 here. Remove that from the bottom and change that to 0. There we go. So there's a bit of making sure that the criteria actually fits with what you're trying to do. Because it was equivalent to 5 and the counter was after the actual task, it made it so that once it hit 5, it didn't actually go into the loop again. Now the last loop is a for each loop. This one's going to be a bit different because it references special like concepts. First we have to denote, for the first example, we have to denote range. So dim c as range. This is because the first loop we're going to do is similar to the for next loop, but it's going to be for each C in selection. Or actually, let's not use selection. In range cells row 1, column 3, to row 5, column 3. So C1 to C5. For each cell in this range, we're going to do, so let's check if is numeric C. So what this does is if the cell is a number and is empty C, and is it empty false, then and if, remember this is how you end the if statement, and if. And then what do we want to do? If it's a number and it's empty, we're going to make C equivalent to negative C. 
and then us is not going to do anything. So let me indent a couple things so we know what is what. So this is going to be for the first loop. This is going to be the second one. And this is going to be the third one. So let's put numbers in just so we have a means to actually use this. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 all positive and you know that it's a number and it's not empty. Well let's change this to A just to make it apparent. And what this is going to do is change the actual number to a negative. See? All these actually change from positive to negative. If I click it again it's going to go from negative to positive. Now we can actually do some interesting things now that we know how to work loops. Because we know how to do a loop into a condition, we could actually make a loop where someone has to guess a word until they get it right or else the loop is going to be continuous. It's just going to loop forever. So first of all, we're going to dim string guess as string because they have to guess a word. right? Then we're going to say this is a loop, so it's a loop do because we have criteria loop until uppercase because we want to make sure we catch any type of variation of uppercase and lowercase of the word. Uppercase string guess is equivalent to cheetah as a string. So we know this is going to loop until the guess is cheetah. At the moment, there's nothing in there, so if we play this, it's just going to loop. I think it might loop forever. So before we do that, we're going to say string guess is equivalent to input box. Please, or what is the fastest animal in the world? So now if I play this, what is the fastest animal in the world? I can type bear. It's going to keep going. Cat, um, dog. It's just actually going to loop until someone types in cheetah. So in the event that cheetah isn't typed or someone forgets the word, you would actually be stuck there if you ran the macro. And you would have to end the whole Excel task and actually reopen it. This brings us to the next, or at least the problems with loops. It becomes much more easy to break an Excel sheet because you actually run through scenarios where you loop infinitely. As an example, if I did something like, let's do dim i as integer, and then let's do a loop do, loop until i is greater than or is less than zero. But if I do that and I have an encounter that says i equals i plus one, and i is equal to zero, no matter what, if I play this, and if you guys didn't know, F8 runs through step by step what the macro does. So now I have i equals 1 because it starts at 0 and adds 1. This isn't true because i is now, it's not less than 0, so it's going to keep going, but i grows. So i becomes 2, and there's no way 2 is less than 0 as well, and it's just going to keep growing and growing, and it's going to loop infinitely, and then I'll break my Excel sheet. So this is just one of the problems the big problems that comes up, you have to be much more careful with how you write your code because you could go through loops like these very easily, especially if you're going to start nesting loops. So as an example, let's do a loop through the rows and then a loop through the columns. You could very easily get yourself mixed up. This puts an end to the basics of VBA. Hopefully it was helpful. And uh, there are four assignments posted on learn in case that you want to get more practice. Thanks.